And it is my joy this morning. We have an, a person coming to us who is new to us and will bring some insight into areas we haven't really been able to explore before. So we are very blessed. And I wish to welcome Dr. Joey S. Kim from the English department. And she's going to be talking about body facts, poems, and book banning in Korea. So whenever you're ready, Dr. Kim, you can take it away. Thank you so much. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Good to see you all. And um, thank you as well for the land acknowledgement. So hello everyone. My name is Joey S. Kim and I um, will be speaking today about the history of book banning in South Korea. And I'm gonna end by reading some poems from my new collection, Body Facts. So in recent years, South Korea has risen in global relations as what we call a quote unquote soft power, meaning a persuasive approach to international relations, typically involving the use of economic or cultural influence. With this soft power, it has done so with its you know, celebrated cultural exports and artistic productions, including the Oscar winning film Parasite, K-pop bands like BTS, streaming TV shows and K-dramas, and Korean skincare and beauty trends even. So these cultural influences currently help make South Korea one of the freest media environments in Asia, according to the World Press Freedom Index. This, however, was not always the case. After a highly censored decade, the 2017 election of current president Moon Jae-in has made freedom of expression, especially in the younger generation, more of the norm. Although South Korea today is a wealthy um, democracy kind of connoted with freedom of expression and these more um, egalitarian ideals, the practice of censoring books and films was frequent under the country's dictators from the early 1960s to the late 1980s, especially if these works were deemed supportive of North Korea. And historically, the biggest type of book banning in South Korea has been restricted to the military only. For example, in August, 2008, August 1st, 2008, we had the largest recent governmental book ban by South Korea's Ministry of National Defense. On this list in 2008, 23 books were banned and could not be read or kept on a military base. And these books are divided into three categories, pro-North Korea, anti-government or anti-US, and finally anti-capitalism. In today's digital era, simply banning a book, however, cannot stop the flow of information. And some of the books on this list are widely read in South Korea and even became more popular due to the military ban. These include books by American linguist and political activist Noam Chomsky and a book by Professor Hajun Cheng, a professor at Cambridge University, called Bad Samaritans, The Myth of Free Trade and the Secret History of Capitalism. Publishing or even carrying or reading pro-communism publications is still technically prohibited under South Korea's national security law, but the government no longer enforces an official ban on any books, according to local publishers. In addition to military book bans, individual political regimes have instituted practices of censorship, particularly in regards to textbooks and education. In 2013, for example, South Korea's Ministry of Education instructed publishers to revise their high school history textbooks. 
then in 2015, the South Korean National Institute of Korean History announced plans to replace existing history textbooks in high schools with one authorized version by March 2017. These state-issued textbooks are to be written by a government-appointed panel of experts. In the larger context, this textbook controversy is part of an ongoing dispute on whether the state should control the content of history textbooks and possibly enforce a monopoly, or whether individual schools and teachers should be free to choose their own. South Korea used to have state control over textbooks, so that was the case, until the rules were relaxed in 2003, leading to the appearance of several competing textbooks used since. And the controversies over what can and cannot be included in secondary school textbooks primarily concern, there's a running theme here, the portrayal of North Korea as well as the description of the regime of the South Korean president, Park Chung-hee, who ruled South Korea from 1961 to 1979. President Park, the third president of South Korea, is probably the single most influential figure in South Korean politics during the 20th century. And he led the country through a period of rapid economic development and transformed South Korean society into the template for kind of what we know it of, of it as today. As a country currently still at war, the Korean War had a cease and conflict at the end of 1953 and it's at armistice. South Korea is in a unique position of sharing its formerly united peninsula with North Korea. Before the Korean War, which was from 1950 to 1953, Korea was also a colony of the Japanese Empire from 1910 to 1945. And Japan had its own set of censorship and book banning practices. In addition to book banning, it banned Korean language and burned over 200,000 um, Korean historical documents wiping out the historical memory of Korea in an effort to eliminate much of Korean culture. During the Japanese occupation, schools and universities forbade speaking Korean and emphasized manual labor and loyalty to the Japanese empire. Public places adopted Japanese too, and an edict to make films in Japanese only soon followed. For example, um, my maternal grandmother, who I will read a poem about, was born in Seoul during the Japanese occupation and used a Japanese name and was educated in the Japanese language. In closing, the historical and present threats of war, attack, and the familial and cultural ideals to possibly reunify the now divided Korean peninsula into one Korean Republic have made it hard for South Korean governments to clearly disengage from previous authoritarian practices. In addition, as a result of a treaty of mutual defense signed between the US and South Korea in 1953 at the end of Korean conflict, there are about 28,500 U.S. troops currently stationed in South Korea. In this 70-year alliance, the U.S. and South Korea agreed to collective self-defense should either be threatened in the Pacific region. This treaty thus provides the basis for the stationing of U.S. forces in South Korea and shows, I think, South Korea's multiple, sometimes contradictory interests and concerns as a rapidly developing country. Especially in the context of North Korea's extremely different circumstances and dictatorships, South Korea is in a complex position of uncertain futures regarding its neighbors to the North and Asia, the Asia Pacific region as a whole. As a Korean American woman born on US soil, my experience is not a South Korean one, 
but it is one of growing up in these two cultures at once, right? My diasporic identity. And my diasporic identity has informed my scholarship, my teaching, and my creative writing. After years of writing and learning about Korean history, I published Body Facts um, earlier this year. This collection specifically imagines conversations with my Korean elders and ancestors through recovering familial and national histories. Body Facts is the beginning of a longer series of works interweaving personal experiences, traumas, historical events, memories, and Korean history and art forms, such as specific Korean verse forms. These poems also serve as an Anglophone, English language, channel from which to interrogate the previous Trump administration's discourse of U.S.-Korea relations, specifically from the perspective of a Korean-American woman. At the same time, they are deeply personal, autobiographical, and confessional. I'd like to close now by reading a few poems from the collection that speak to the ideas of political censorship, cultural confusion or anxiety, and identity building in the Korean diaspora. Currency. How do you harvest a language that doesn't bear fruit? Do you thresh and winnow shaft, blow it clean and airy into lithe tongue? What can be grown from fecund soil turned gravel? Once legal tender, how do you spend one language and save another? How do you record this language born of hastily named passengers of a paper voyage? This next poem is about my grandmother who I mentioned. My mother's mother. There's too much to beauty. Quote, beauty makes lonely, end quote, she tells me. I turn to ask her what she means, and harmony, grandma, returns to silence. My harmony comes from a line of women without mirror, spiritual to me and my thoughts. Language severed us. Severed a line, beeps, alerts, alarms, telephone wires crossed, noise and time without harmony. Lee Jung Suk, born August 7th, 1927, a time when Korea was under the occupation, under a Japanese name, under speech withheld for a want of refuge. Border body. Quote, after the Korean War, they split my country in half. Russia got top half and US got bottom. China saved North Korea after Korean War and South Korea became Western, end quote. My dad tells me. Western, like my grandpa's favorite show, Bonanza. And Lauren Green singing, quote, we chased Lady Luck till we finally struck Bonanza with a gun and a rope and a hat full of hope, planted a family tree. On this land, we put our brand, end quote. Land for the Western white boy from Holmec who refused to look me in the eye unless his teeth were showing. White teeth, pursed silence, then 
eruption of, quote, Chinese, Japanese, dirty knees, look at these, end quote. I'm about as Chinese as you are, white boy, but my mind saying I'm about as confused. I scavenge for my thoughts before China, North Korea, Japan. I stare into my empty lined hands for evidence of a kinship. This is the last poem I'll be reading, and it's called The Ides of March. The Ides of March. It is almost middle March, the time when Romans were expected to settle debts. Looking east, I sputter under the increasing debt of war that my two Koreas accrue. A few days after confusing South and North Korea again, Trump tweets that, quote, possible progress is being made in talks with North Korea. For the first time in many years, a serious effort is being made by all parties concerned. The world is watching and waiting. Maybe false hope, but the U.S. is ready to go hard in either direction, end quote. He speaks unable to fathom the other and beckons me to leave. I remember the July monsoons in Seoul, how they pummeled the yellow ground into new earth. I remember the proverb my father would always tell me, after the rain, the ground hardens. After the rain, the ground hardens. After the rain, the ground hardens. Winter plunges onto me my land's inheritance. Thank you. The word is grandmother for the students so they can get their credit. Does anybody have any questions or comments? For, for Joey. I really enjoyed the poetry. And I, I also found your comments very enlightening. These are things that I just didn't know. I had no idea of the history of censorship in that part of the world. Thank you. You are welcome. So anybody with any questions or comments for Joey? I do think it's time for me to say how grateful we are to all of the people who help us.